In today's Black Clover video we show you exactly why Ryuya from the Land of the Rising Sun can't be trusted 100%. Whether he is good or evil, the point is that he's probably not telling the whole truth. If you end up liking this video, consider subscribing. Please enjoy this video. Let's go! The last Black Clover chapter revealed the Land of the Rising Sun and the new character named Ryuya Ryudo. And as you all know from our last video, we think the whole scene is just extremely suspicious. We've noticed that the majority of the Black Clover fandom doesn't believe that anything out of the ordinary is happening, so today we are trying to make it clear that something is definitely wrong. Anyway, let's summarize everything we know so far, then you will definitely see what I mean. So Asta woke up in Yami's homeland, the land of the rising sun. This land has been hinted at since the beginning of Black Clover with Yami's mysterious appearance in the Clover Kingdom. This has always been part of the story, even before the revelation of the Alpha Incarnation, before the revelation of the Death was in the Spade Kingdom, and of course before the Zagratas family was even mentioned. So Tabata always planned to include the Land of the Rising Sun in the final storyline. And if you think now, oh okay, but Julius, that is Lucius, has always been there since the beginning of the series. So he's the one we need to focus on, after all, he was the one who knew Yami would end up in the Clover Kingdom, and then intended to use him as the source for the Clifford Tree. Right, but who made sure that Yami ended up in the Clover Kingdom? Why should we focus only on the person who found Yami and not on the person who might be responsible for Yami ending up in the Clover kingdom in the first place. Keep in mind that Ryuya said that Asta couldn't return to the Clover Kingdom without help. So Yami couldn't get to the Clover Kingdom without help either. Logical conclusion is someone must have been responsible for this. It was not a coincidence. That alone is the ultimate proof that something is wrong. More on this in a moment, let's continue. What could become very important is the fact that it looks like Asta's grimoire might be missing. Depending on what that means, it could be a very bad sign. You never take away someone's grimoire period. Whether that's dangerous depends on whether they give him back his grimoire or find excuse why he can't have it at the moment. Also in this context, not only is Asa's grimoire out of sight, but so is his devil Liebe. Liebe is supposedly being healed in another room, which could be possible, but at the same time is unusual. Why were they two separated in the first place? Of course, this could be a plot device that could be used to develop the story. The point is that there definitely must be a reason why Tabata separated Asta and Liebe, and maybe it has something to do with Asta's grimoire. Let's see. Take that suspicion with a grain of salt though. The next very important thing is that there is some kind of robot or doll that looks exactly like Charmy and even makes the same sounds as her. The point is that it's been portrayed as if she's not a living being, which makes sense because how else would that be possible, unless she's a clone or whatever. It's odd that Asta insisted that maybe she's Charmy after all, even though he was told that it was merely a doll. And also Asta can easily read key to identify creatures, which Asta already does unintentionally. So if if he insists that it is Charmy, then maybe there is a mystery there. Maybe it has something to do with why Ryuya also looks like Yami and why they both have similar key, who knows. However, the fact that there is a replica of Charmy in any way is definitely absurd. The very fact that this aspect was included in the story shows how well Ryuya actually knows the Clover Kingdom and how much he observes the Black Bulls without anyone noticing, most likely with the help of his eye. More on that in a moment as well. It could get a lot weirder if not only Charmy and Ryuya resembles the Black Bulls, but other people appear who resemble other characters as well. If that happens, that would probably be the moment when I would say that there's definitely something wrong, so let's see. The next very suspicious point is that Ryuya knows Asta's name, which means he definitely has the ability to see things. Then something important, it was revealed that Asta's injury was completely healed. But he has a scar, which again is very suspicious. There are two types of healing magic. One closes the wound and prevents it from having fatal consequences on the body, resulting in a scar. Remember how Asta was injured in the dungeon, Mimosa closed his wound and then he even showed it to Rebecca in the pub. This is the perfect example of closing a wound with healing magic and then letting it heal naturally creating a scar. Asta clearly has that on his belly now. And the second type of healing magic is that the healing magic completely removes the injury, as is the case with Mimosa's ultimate healing magic for example. 
But Asta's new scar just doesn't make sense. He didn't have enough time to develop such a scar. However, there's no healing magic that creates a scar instantly. The only possibility is that it is either medicine or time magic, which fits Ryu's ability to see things. But again, would make him suspicious. So yeah, in that regard, the scar could definitely be one of the red flags. Of course, we have to keep in mind that Ryuya said that he wasn't the one who healed Asta, but one of his friends, and that he doesn't have such an impressive power. He didn't mention magic, he didn't specify the power that was used. I wouldn't say healing magic is something that is considered impressive, but as I explained, the circumstances of how Asta was healed make that power very strange after all. So it must be an impressive power. Of course, one could assume that it might have something to do with time magic and thus again with Astaroth, since time magic could definitely cause such a scar if you speed up the healing process, for example. Imagine Astaroth is somehow alive and will be revealed next chapter, that would be crazy. Then Ryu has said that his friend is currently healing Liba as well. As mentioned before, that could be a suspicious thing, depending on what happens next with Liba. And if we want to go full suspicion mode, then what about the fact that he tells Asta to drink his tea? We can't even trust the tea Asta is currently drinking. Let's not get too paranoid right now. For now at least. Asta immediately understood that it is strange that Ryuya knows about devils, which should not surprise us since we know that Ryuya has the ability to know everything that people in the Clover King them also know. What's important here is that Asta can't perceive anything evil or hostile from her US key, which is usually a good sign, but then again, why will Tabata include this aspect? Why does Tabata feel the need to reassure us that Ryua is not evil, and even tries to imply this with Ki? If he intends to make him good, then he could theoretically just leave that part out and keep this possibility that he might be evil as a little mystery to make the situation more exciting, a little bit like he did with Nacht. That would certainly add a little spice to the whole situation. To me, the fact that it's mentioned that his key doesn't show any hostility could actually be a hint that Tawata himself knows that the whole scene looks very absurd, simply because it is. So he either wants to make sure we understand the scene and Ryuya correctly, or he wants us to believe that we can trust Ryuya when in reality we can't. Always keep in mind, you can be kind but do evil things for the greater good. In this case, his key would not show evil intentions. Ryuya may not have anything evil in mind, but that doesn't mean he shares Asta's beliefs. William had not shown any hostility either, even though Yami asked him directly. The reason is because he literally had no evil in mind, and yet he was a traitor. Julius did not show any hostility because he himself did not know that he was sharing a body with Lucius Zagratus. So why should we trust in Key when this concept has already failed twice in this context? For me, there's definitely no reason to trust Ryuya just because his key shows no evil intentions. I will now give the mic to my partner, he will continue this video, have fun. Alright, since we are already talking about key, when Ryuya mentions that he and Yami were childhood friends, Asta notices that their key is very similar. This is definitely another clue to the overall mystery of this chapter and hints at a connection between Ryuya and Yami. The fact that they are friends does not mean that their key is the same. Yami and Nacht are friends, and yet their key is not the same, so that can be the explanation for why Ria's key resembles Yami's. Of course, we can't ignore the fact that they look like they are related. So if they are related, why would Ria lie about it? Many people say that they can be related because his name is not Tsukihiro. Of course, that's a very good reason. But think about it. If Ria is lying about being related to Yami, wouldn't it be strange if he revealed that his real name is Tsukihiro? Obviously, he can lie about one thing and tell the truth about the other if the two things are related after all. Of course, he would lie about his last name if he also also lied about his family relationship with Yami. Julius' real name is not Noakrono, but Zogratis. Just remember that in Black Clover, it's not so easy to be able to judge things correctly right away. Let's keep that in mind. Next is the fact that Ria knows literally everything. The situation with Sister Lily, Julius, and so on. He confirms that he sees things and points to his eye that he covered. Just like Vanika, who covered her eye to hide her devil eye. For example, just like Asta covered his arm to hide his devil arm. I'm just saying, take it any way you want, he definitely uses the power with his eye that allows him to see things and forces him to hide it. I wouldn't rule out the possibility of a pact with the time devil Astaroth for a devil eye. He then reveals that his eye is telling him that if Asta returns now, he will lose, strongly suggesting time magic and the ability to see the future once and for all. Of course, that doesn't have to be the case, it could also have something to do with the key. But then, the eye patch would be a bit strange. If his power is based on natural key, then why hide his eye? 
Next interesting thing to mention is that Rhea said that Asta can't return on his own anyway, as if Asta couldn't just use Devil Union mode for 10 minutes and flood the Clover Kingdom. We know that the speed of the characters in Black Clover is extremely fast. 10 minutes in the Devil Union mode and then flying on his sword again for 30 minutes, alternating like that until he arrives shouldn't really be a big deal. So where is the problem? Is it maybe really a different dimension? Of course, that would make the whole thing with Yami being shipwrecked in the Clover Kingdom much more suspicious. You see, something is definitely wrong. And that's pretty much all there is to mention so far, aside from the fact that Rhea was expecting Asta to arrive at a certain place and also at a certain time. So it's not one chapter that's suspicious, but already two. If the next chapter also gives us more clues for suspicion, I think we can't ignore that possibility any longer. Now, we come to the second part of the video. Why does all this at least hint at the possibility that Rhea could be suspicious, regardless of whether he's evil or not? Here, we come back to things that made Julius Noah Chrono suspicious. Suspicious. Lucius the Gratis went to the Clover Kingdom for one reason only, namely to collect the sources for the Clifford Ritual. At least that was his main goal. For that he knew two things. First that William would be the first source and second Yami would be the second source. But how was he supposed to know that Yami would end up in the Clover Kingdom? Of course, we know that Lucius can see the future in different timelines. So obviously he would have followed his plan based on the timeline that leads to Yami ending up in the continent of the Four Kingdoms. That makes sense. But now let's go to the Land of the Rising Sun and look at things from Ruya's perspective. While we don't know how long Ruya has had the ability to see things, we must at least assume that Ruya may not be who he says he is, and thus may have had the eye for many years. So he may have always known that Yami would end up the way he did, and yet he let that happen without telling Yami or saving him respectively. If he knew everything, why didn't he stop before it was too late? You could say that he chose the perfect timeline, so that in general, the best outcome would come about, which then apparently required Lucius to reach his final goal so that everything would end in the best possible way. But that's hard to believe, because why would it be the best outcome to have the main villain reach his final goal and then be defeated, instead of stopping the main villain before it gets harder? We could assume that by Lucius achieving his goal, the main characters would become so strong that they can even defeat him in his prime. But they couldn't if they had tried to stop him too soon. This is also a very reasonable thought, but it still implies that Ruya is not telling the whole truth, especially considering that he basically confirmed that it is not possible for Asta to return to the Clover Kingdom without any help, which suggests that Yami himself didn't just accidentally end up in the Clover Kingdom either, because that implies the possibility that Asta could do the same and even much easier with flying and devil mode. So if someone is needed to help Asta return to the Clover Kingdom, then that person may have helped or forced Yami to get to the land continent of the Four Kingdoms as well, without Yami realizing it, which again could be very suspicious as it could mean that Lucius could be working with whoever is responsible for Yami ending up in the Clover Kingdom, just as Lucius is responsible for Asta ending up in the land of the rising sun. Because let's face it, both Yami and Asta landed in the other country in the same way. Both were on the coast, Asta was teleported directly from Lucius to Ruya, who was already expecting Asta, and Yami somehow ended up in the Clover Kingdom, where Lucius had already started his plan by manipulating Julius. It would be naive to ignore this idea. Considering all the things we just mentioned, the following possibilities arise. Either Ruya and Lucius are working together, or Ruya is using Lucius Lucius for his own goals. This could either be good for the continent of the Four Kingdoms or bad. We don't know the situation between the land of the rising sun and the continent of the Four Kingdoms. No one really seems to know anything about Yami's homeland. But in the land of the rising sun, the continent of the Four Kingdoms seems to be very well known. Maybe Rhea really wants to defeat Lucius, but for his own agenda. That would explain why the girl looks so mad when she looks at Asta. Perhaps there is some anger emanating from the people in the land of the rising sun towards the people in the Four Kingdoms. There are quite a few ways this could play out. The point is that we just don't know anything about the people or the country to be able to decide whether or not we can trust them to have the same goal as the people of the Clover Kingdom. That's it for today folks, hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to smash the like button and if you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe with the notification bell turned on. See you guys in the next video, yummy out!